Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for gathering us together for a good purpose. Thank you because you promised to reveal your mind unto us. And as we read the word tonight and interpret and apply the word to every heart, we pray you bless every one of us in Jesus' name. We pray that this will be a profitable time spiritually for every one of us and for all those who are connected and listening. In Jesus' name, we pray. I welcome every one of you to the Bible study today in Jesus' name. We're continuing with our study of the book of Revelation. And in Revelation, we're now in chapter 20. In chapter 20, we're looking at verses 1 through to 10. Open your Bible as we read together. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of a bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on a dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. And he bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit. And shut him up. And set a seal upon him. That he should deceive the nations no more. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones. And they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had worshipped, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received the mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And shall reign with him a thousand years. And when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea and he went up on the breast of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devouched them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's the reading of the word of God we're studying tonight. You'll notice that a thousand years as a period of time comes up, Many, many times in a passage of scripture. And it is from that we get the word millennium. Actually, the word millennium is composed of two Latin words, mil, meaning a thousand, and then annum, meaning a year. You remember when you go to your place of work and they say you are earning this per annum. That means you are earning that per year. And when you put those two words together, meal and annum, then you have millennium. It's a thousand year period. And we're told in this passage that the Lord Jesus Christ will reign on this earth for a thousand years. The reign of Christ for a thousand years, that is Christ's millennial reign. I want you to look at verse 4, the latter part of verse 4, the last line. And they lead and reign with Christ a thousand years. That's the millennial reign right there. You will notice as you look at the passage very well that the 1,000 year period is mentioned six times in this short passage. Look at it in verse 2. In verse 2 it says, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. It's talking about the time when Christ will reign. When he comes to reign here, he will reign without any hindrance. It will reign without any interruption. 
and it will reign without any any interruption from the devil a thousand years look at verse three you're looking for the words thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled again you have the thousand years there that christ will be on this earth and he'll be reigning and ruling for a thousand years look at verse 4 and i saw thrones and they that sat and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and i saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received this mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And then you jump down to verse 5. It, it mentions the thousand years again. It says, but the rest of the dead lived not until the thousand years were fulfilled. Verse 6. Blessed and holy. You see that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of god and of christ and shall reign with him a thousand years and now for the sixth time that the thousand years i mentioned you are verse seven and when the thousand years are expired are finished and fulfilled satan shall be loosed out of his prison and so you understand why we titled this message the millennial kingdom when christ the king takes up the kingdom and he rules and reigns over the kingdom those thousand years then you have the kingdom of christ for one thousand years the millennial kingdom of christ i would simply say christ's millennial reign if you were here last week or if you remember what you studied last week you'll know that we studied about the battle of armageddon that is the destruction at the time of the destruction of the enemies of god let me just refresh your memory and remind you what we learned at that time in revelation chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 11 and i saw heaven opened and behold the white horse and he that sat upon him called faithful and true and in righteousness he does judge and make war that war that battle that great conflict where he destroys his enemies that's the battle of armageddon and then we're told about his description when he comes to judge the people when he comes to fight against the enemies of righteousness in verse 12 his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns symbolizing the victory that he had won and he had a name reaching that no man knew but he himself and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean that is the raptured saints the redeemed people of God, the righteous people of God, the renewed people of God, whose lives have been renewed by the washing of the blood of the Lamb. And then they came in righteousness, clothed in white linen, the righteousness of the saints. And they came in white horses, or white horses, because those white horses, they symbolize the victory that they had won. And because they had won the victory, Christ gave them the victory. Now they want to be able to partake in the joy and the celebration of the reigning of Christ and destruction of the enemies of God and the enemies of Christ. And we're told in verse 15, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that we see it it should, it should smite the nations and it should rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the wine press of the fierceness of the wrath of the almighty god and he has on his vesture and on his tie a name reaching king of kings and lord of lords and i saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven come and gather yourselves together unto the unto the supper of the great god that's the battle of armageddon right there and the lord was saying was going to destroy all those enemies all the people that come against christ all the people that will want to resist the reign of christ as christ will come at the end of the great tribulation 
and then the devil and all and the false prophet the beast they will rise against christ will fight against him and beat him back so that it will not come to rule and to reign and then we're told that god announced through that angel that he will so destroy them and the birds of the air will feed upon them and it says in verse 18 that he may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men both free and bound and free and bound and both small and great and i saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army and then the lord defeats them and the lord destroys them and they are killed and then the false prophet as well as the beast is cast right into the lake of fire in verse 20 and the beast was taken and was seen the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived the them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone and the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse which sword proceeded out of his mouth that the sharp word the word that is sharper than any two-edged sword he speaks the word and his enemies are destroyed and then we are told and all the fowls were filled with their flesh it's after the victory of that battle after the battle of Armageddon, and then the false prophet had been gotten rid of and the beast representing the antichrist had been gotten rid of now christ establishes his millennial reign but we know that there are three of them satan the antichrist and the false prophet although the false prophet and the beast the antichrist had been taken care of and they had been consigned and refined and uh, kind of uh, put in the lake of fire how about satan that's why we're looking at that at this today you will see that in verse 1 it says and i saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand and then we're told in verse 2 and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and satan and bound him a thousand years that tells us then that immediately after that ma battle of Armageddon and after the destruction of the enemies of God, which we just read about now, there will be the establishment of the kingdom of Christ, of the millennial kingdom for a thousand years. The millennial kingdom is the coming golden age when there will be wonderful, wonderful provision for the people of God. And that's the time when Christ will rule in great power here on the earth. Maybe you're asking the question, what will it look like when Christ comes to reign on the earth? Uh, we have seen in the, in the case of the children of Israel, when David reigned, and when Solomon reigned, and when all those kings, when they reigned, some of them good kings, some of them bad kings, some of them righteous kings, and some of them unrighteous kings. And we have seen the condition of the world at that time, when they reigned. But the question is, when Christ comes to reign, what will be the condition of things in the world? At that time, there will be number seven things. Number one, there will be unprecedented peace. Because the Prince of Peace comes to reign. And then he brings peace in the hearts of men, in the lives of men, in every town, in every city. At that time, all over the world, there will be unprecedented peace on the earth when it comes to reign a thousand years. And you know that the people that will be reigning with the Lord Jesus Christ, they'll be righteous people. They'll be holy people. They'll be saintly people. They'll be uncorrupted people. And because the righteous Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords will be reigning, and those who are reigning with him are righteous, holy, saintly people, so you will have unprecedented peace. Number two, there'll be unparalleled prosperity. The prosperity that had never been since the world began. You're going to have that kind of prosperity unparalleled, unequal, uncompared, incomparable to any other thing that had ever been since the beginning of the world. Number three, unpretentious purity. That is some pretended purity. That means something that is not superficial, very deep in the hearts of the people of God. There's going to be that purity because Christ, the Holy One, Christ, the one that makes holy, 
Christ, the righteous one. Christ the true and the faithful. He'll be reigning. And because he's reigning a king of kings and lord of lords, therefore you will have unpretentious, unpretending purity at that time. Number four, there will be uninterrupted protection. Actually, we are told that as you look at him, as you look at Isaiah, it says in Isaiah that the lands will not be able to hurt. And the wild animals, the ferocious animals, will not be able to destroy. In all his holy mountain, when Christ comes to reign, he brings in uninterrupted protection. Life will be pro protected. And people will live so long. It will be like you are going back to the days before the flood of Noah. When people lived many, many years. Remember Methuselah? He lived so many years. The only difference is it will even be better at that time. Because there will be no sickness. Because Christ himself, the governor and the ruler and the king. The king of kings and lord of lords will be ruling. You know when he came to this world. When he wasn't even king at that time. When he was just serving us and he came to save us you know how he just terminated sickness in the life of everyone that came to him but you know at that time he'll be in charge he'll be in control and because he'll be in charge he'll be in control then there will be uninterrupted protection number five there will be unbroken preservation preservation of life preservation of property because all the evil people criminals they'll be totally crushed and there'll be no satan on the earth at that time to disturb anybody or to lure anybody into evil everyone will be under the control of the lord there will be unbroken pre preservation number six there'll be unequal pleasure just the joy of the lord uninterrupted unmixed with any other thing no sorrow no sadness just the joy of the lord uninterrupted unequal pleasure number seven unrestricted priesthood because you see at that time those of us that come from heaven after we have been raptured and we have been in heaven with the lord jesus christ at the time of the great tribulation here on earth the saints of god are there in heaven and then when he comes he comes to rule or to set up his kingdom then we come with him and we shall be priests of god and priests of christ and because we're going to be priests at that time unto the Lord, it will be unrestricted priesthood even unto the Lord. Look at verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. And they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And that's what we're looking forward to after the great tribulation had passed and the battle of Armageddon had been fought and then Christ comes and he sets up that kingdom. There will be perpetual health and unending joy. The extraordinary lifespan of the natural people during that millennium will be like the people before the flood, even much, much better. Christ will physically return to this earth to put now his enemies and to reign over the earth for a literal 1,000 year period. He will rule the nations with a rod of iron. And then every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank God he is our Lord now. He will be Lord over the whole universe at that time. When looking at the message and dividing into three parts. Number one, the restraint of the old serpent and the retribution of Satan. The restraint of the old serpent and the retribution of Satan. Number two, the resurrection of the saved and the reign of the saints. The resurrection of the saved and the, resurrect and the reign of the saints. Then number three, the release of Satan and the revolt of sinners. The release of Satan and the revolt of sinners. We'll come back to number uh, number one. We're looking at Revelation again, chapter 20, verses 1, 2, and 3. Revelation chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, 
and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season here we read about the restraint of the old serpent that is is not allowed to operate the way he used to operate for all these thousands of years one thousand years is kept in the bottomless pit and then retribution that means recompense that means punishment is given unto him for that period of time as you look at this it says and i saw an angel come down from heaven as you listen to john he actually saw the vision of many angels as he went through this book of the revelation just look at a few of them in revelation chapter 10 verse 1 revelation chapter 10 verse 1 and i saw another mighty angel come down from heaven when those angels were sent to do a specific thing a definite thing they are sent with great power with great might with great authority and they're able to carry out what the father heavenly father god in heaven i told them to carry out in this case in what we're studying today you'll see that the great angel the mighty angel the powerful angel the irresistible angel is coming to bind the devil and who can bind the devil like that and throw him for a thousand years into the bottomless pit except an angel mighty in power mighty in authority and they'll be given that authority from the heavenly father the angels actually are mighty enough to be able to bind the devil when the lord wants him bound here we see this angel a mighty angel coming down from heaven in revelation chapter 18 verse 1 revelation chapter 18 reading from verse 1 and we're looking at what john saw it says in revelation chapter 18 verse 1 and after these things i saw an angel come down from heaven having great power uh, that means that you see these angels of god and uh, there are some normally normal regular ordinary angels then there are some extraordinary angels some of them mighty mightier than the rest of them and some of them having great power not just power and this is one of such angels that the lord said and he said now the millennium is about to begin and no no satan no devil no dragon will be allowed to hinder uh, the going on or the the, the, the the planning of that kingdom therefore angel you go down and take that devil bind him and throw him into the bottomless pit let's come back to revelation chapter 20 verse 1 and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. The key, having the key. That key had been actually in the hands of the Almighty God and had been delivered unto the Lord Jesus Christ. But now Jesus Christ hands over that key to a mighty angel, a great angel, an angel with great power. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. Revelation 1 verse 18, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death, and have the keys of hell and of death. He opens and nobody can shut, and he shuts and nobody can open, and now he gives the key of this bottomless pit to a mighty angel to a great angel to a strong angel and he said go and bind that devil and throw him in the bottomless pit seal him up there chain him there restrain him there and limit his activities right there so that i can reign without any interruption has this bottomless pit been opened any time before has this bottomless pit been opened by with the key by any other angel before yes at the time of the great tribulation let me just remind you and refresh your memory in revelation chapter 9 reading from verse 1 revelation chapter 9 from verse 1 and the fifth angel sounded and i saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit and there came out of the smoke locusts 
upon the earth unto them and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth had power and that is the time that the Lord allowed those uh, demonic locusts to torment the people on the earth because they had not given their lives to the Lord. They, they got themselves involved in evil things and therefore judgment came upon them at the time of the great tribulation. Come back to Revelation chapter 20 verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless beach and a great chain in his hand and a great chain in his hand what's that chain meant to do it's very obvious is to tie the devil up is to bind the devil up and it's to so tie and bind him that he will be in that bottomless pit and suffer all through that period of time we're told in jude verse 6 that actually the angels that didn't keep uh, their place, that is those that followed after the devil in his original rebellion. They are also kept in chains and they are kept under punishment and they have been suffering. And that, chain, that same chain is now used against the devil, against the dragon, against that old serpent, so that he too will go into that same place and suffer for 1,000 years before Jesus, uh, when Jesus Christ will be reigning on their Jude verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Now, as you read that, you know that uh, even though it's a great judgment because it says he has reserved them in everlasting chains under darkness. But it's still like a stopping place. It's still like it's not the final judgment. The final judgment will be in hellfire. The final judgment will be in the lake of fire. The final judgment will be real serious torment forever and ever. But it's like a temporary thing. It's like when a criminal is arrested and he has not been finally judged, but he's put in detention. And in detention, he's suffering. He doesn't, he doesn't have the kind of food that he normally eats. And he doesn't have the liberty to go up and down. And he cannot do just what he likes. He is already under judgment and suffering and punishment. But that's not the final judgment yet. That's the same thing with these angels that did not keep their first estate. And they went after the devil. And they followed after the devil. And they obeyed the devil and rebelled against the almighty God. They are reserved. In everlasting chains, on the darkness, unto the judgment of that great day. That's the same thing happening to the devil here. Because it says he'll be changed. He'll be restricted. He'll be put in the bottomless pit. And then finally after the 1,000 years I expire, there'll be the final judgment. Let me just show you that. We're still going to look at it. Revelation chapter 20 verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. But this time now in the bottomless pit, just 1,000 years, a millennial period, when he'll be tormented over there temporarily. And then eventually he'll be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. Let's come back to Revelation chapter 20, looking at it in verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, that is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Here we're told of the identity and the various names and description and the characteristics of Satan. Is called by four names. Number one is called the dragon. Number two is called the old serpent. Number three is called the devil. Number four, Satan. And is bound a thousand years. That tells us at the beginning of the reign of Christ on earth, at the beginning of the millennial reign, Satan will be arrested. He will be changed. And then he'll be imprisoned in the bottomless pit. He will be seized by an angelic force, power, or strength greater than himself. And the great enemy will be bound and overcome by his superior and mighty power. And let us look at this for some time. The names by which is called the dragon. When it says the dragon, we came across that before. If you turn your Bible back to Revelation chapter 12. 
Revelation chapter 12, reading from verse 9. And a great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Do you see the four names there? The four descriptions there? Number one in that verse 9, that old serpent. Number two, called the devil. Number three, and Satan. And then at the beginning of that verse, the great dragon. You see those uh, four titles or four names there. He deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels was, were cast out with him. And this uh, dragon, uh, we're told that uh, he will be seized. He will be arrested. He will be bound. He will be chained. He will be cast into that bottomless pit. So that he can be tormented while the Lord Jesus Christ will be reigning here on earth. A thousand years. And we're told about this same dragon in Isaiah chapter 27. Isaiah chapter 27. Verse 1. In that day the Lord with a sword and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan. The piercing serpent. Even Leviathan that crooked serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Again, you find an allusion to uh, the dragon here, and it's referred to as the Leviathan. And then we're told he will be punished by the Lord. And so then we understand that this uh, old serpent and this uh, dragon, that he will go through the real chastisement and punishment from the Almighty God. Uh, let's look at uh, these uh, names uh, once again. It's called the dragon. And what does that mean? That reveals his fierceness and his wickedness. That uh, is being described by his character or by his characteristic or by the work that he does or by the ferocious nature that he manifests. Not only that, it's referred to as the old serpent. You have read in Genesis chapter 3 how the serpent came to Eve and questioned Eve as God said and eventually deceived her and then they lost the glory of God. They sinned against the Lord and eventually Adam followed also that serpent, that's the old serpent. It was Satan inside that serpent, that's why it's referred to now as the old serpent. He uses subtlety, devilish cleverness, cunning. Is the enemy that made the fall in the garden of Eden to happen. But then it's referred to as the devil. That means just an accuser. Accusing the people of God. Even accusing God. Accusing God to men. Accusing men before God as well. And it's referred to as Satan. The word Satan means enemy. Adversary. Opposer. In these various forms. As the dragon. Or as the old serpent. Or as the devil. Or as Satan, under these various characteristics, he has been ruling and ruining the fallen world. But for 1,000 years, throughout the millennial reign of Christ on earth, he will be shut up and he will be imprisoned in that bottomless pit. And uh, when it says he will be shut up, we've read that already in Revelation chapter 20. But let's look at Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 21 Isaiah chapter 24 let's read from verse 21 and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth you remember that we read that we read about that in Revelation chapter 19 when God punishes all those kings and the great men and the lowly men and the people that follow after the devil. Then in verse 22, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. That is, there will be a temporary time when a judgment comes upon them. There will be a short period of time, a thousand years, is short in comparison with eternity. And then it says, after many days, they'll be released, they'll be loosed, and then visited. Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed. When the Lord of hosts shall reign in, the, in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. 
So you see it's talking about the time when Christ shall reign. And at that time when Christ shall reign, the devil will be changed, restricted, and seized, and bound, and will not be able to operate the way he used to operate. Uh, now, when you think about that angel that will come upon Satan and bind him, that must be a strong angel must be a mighty angel, must be a great angel with irresistible power. Because Jesus said in Luke chapter 11, verse 22, verse 22, Luke 11, verse 20, let's read verse 21. When a strong man and keepeth his palace, his good sign peace, but when he is stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all this armor wherein he trusted and divided his spoils. When he's stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him. That tells you then the angel that will come against the devil, against the dragon, against Satan, against that old serpent will be stronger, much, much stronger than that Satan, than the devil. And that's the time of the judgment of the devil. Actually, the judgment begins at that time in a very serious way, which will culminate, or the climax will be when it's cast into the lake of fire. And the Lord Jesus Christ told us in his earthly ministry that the judgment of Satan had begun already. It says in John chapter 12, John chapter 12, reading from verse 31. John 12, verse 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Actually, it was something that the devil himself knew long, long ago before this time that eventually judgment will come. And although he deceives men and women, boys and girls, although he tells them as if nothing will happen at all, he had been told many, many years before that his judgment was coming. Do you remember at the time when uh, he caused the fall of Adam and Eve? And the Lord said that he was cursed. And the Lord said judgment will come upon him. And that the Lord Jesus Christ will bruise his head. He knew that judgment will come. Isaiah was very, very clear, very definite, very practical as he spoke about the coming judgment on the devil. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 14, reading from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 14. I'm reading from verse from verse 5. It says, The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smotes the people in wrath with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nation in anger is persecuted and none hindered. He is talking ultimately about the devil here. He ruled the nations. And he ruled the nation in wrath, in anger, in fierceness, in wickedness. And now he is persecuted and none can deliver him or stop the judgment and none hinder it. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. That is when the devil goes through that judgment and is bound a thousand years, then the whole earth at that time will be resting. There will be peace, there will be prosperity, there will be protection, there will be preservation, and there will be plenty for people. There will be pleasure, uninterrupted pleasure, unequal pleasure for the people because the devil that tormented them, he now is under the judgment of the Almighty God. But it became even more clear, more clear in verse 12. Look at verse 12 i search at 14 how art how art that how thou art falling from heaven O lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground we did weaken the nations for thou hast said in thine heart i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of god i will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north i will ascend above the heights of the clouds i will be like the most high yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the very to the sides of the pit now do you see here that even at that time long long before jesus christ came he had he had known that eventually he'll get into the pit eventually he'll get into a fire as well you remember what jesus christ said matthew chapter 25 in matthew chapter 25 uh, reading from um, the last uh, verses there you will see what the lord jesus christ had said that the punishment will be 
everlasting. We're told in verse 41, Then shall he say unto them, on the, on the left hand, he'll say unto those people that are wicked, unto those people that are unsaved, unto those people that are unrighteous, unto those people that rebel to the very last minute and the very last moment of their lives, it will say to them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So it's uh, not it's not anything secret at all. It's not anything hidden at all. That eventually Satan will be judged. And the process of judgment actually begins at this time at the beginning of the millennial reign of Christ when he's bound and restricted, restrained in the bottomless pit. Now that the devil goes to the bottomless pit, what will be happening here on earth? At that time of the millennial reign, what will be happening with the saints of God, the people of God, and the people that came with the Lord Jesus Christ to reign on the earth? That leads us to point number two, the resurrection of the saved and the reign of the saints. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. Revelation chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. And for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads and or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now you see it mentions reigning with Christ on the one hand. That's in the latter part of verse 4. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. As it mentions reigning with Christ, it also mentions resurrection in verse 5. This is the first resurrection. Now in verse 6, blessed and holy. You see that has part in the first resurrection. On such the, the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Here, as John continued to look at what the Lord was showing him, and he will see the revelation that the Lord was revealing to him, we're told, he said, I saw thrones in the plural, not just a throne, I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, not him, not just one person now, they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them not that they are judged but they are given privilege to judge they're given the right to rule judgment was given unto them as john saw those thrones were the privileged persons were the saints of god or the righteous people of god sitting upon them he must have remembered what jesus christ said because jesus had told them many many years before that is when jesus was still on earth well, uh, here and was ministering to them and they were following after him look at what jesus had said in luke in uh, matthew chapter 19 verse 27 verse 28 matthew chapter 19 reading from verse 27 and verse 28 then answered peter and said unto him behold we are forsaking all and i follow thee what shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Ye that, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Ye also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. That means then the people of God will join with Christ. That means the saints of Christ will join with Christ. And as Christ reigns, then the saints of Christ and those who have been washing the blood of the Lamb, those who have been turned around away from their sins, and the Lord that renewed their lives and made them righteous by the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb, they will reign with Christ. That's why John the Beloved, when he saw them, he saw those thrones. And he saw the people that were sitting upon those thrones, and judgment was given unto them. Now, as those saints, the triumphant saints, 
the purified says. And the people, those who are overcomers, overcomers, overcoming everything that came as a challenge against their lives. As they now reign with Christ, what are they going to do? Number one, they will pronounce judgment upon the ungodly. Number two, they will determine the destiny of that part of the human race that had rejected the grace of God, had rejected the mercy of God. And uh, you, you may not understand the, the full implication of that today. That means those of us who are preaching, and we're preaching to the sinners, and we're telling them, come to the Lord, that you should accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you reject that call, if you reject that in invitation, a time is coming when those of us that have been used to preach the gospel to you will be sitting on the throne. And we will be bringing the judgment and determining your eternal destiny. That's what it says here. That the people of God, the saints of God, the righteous people of God, those who have been standing faithful and firm in the conviction that Jesus Christ is Lord, the time when he comes to reign, we shall reign with him. And we'll be sitting on the throne judging the people that have rejected the gospel when we presented the gospel to them and what a great privilege you have you can actually be either among the people that will judge sinners or you'll be among the people that will be judged yourself the choice is yours and you can decide to say i'm turning to be i'm turning to the lord i'm going to be among the righteous people the saints of god those who are forgiving those whose lives have been turned around so that i will not be judged at that time i'll be among the people that are judging the unrighteous this event will take place at the beginning of the 1000 year period that is at the beginning of christ's millennial reign the apostle john when he saw that how glad he must be when if you think about the persecution they went through and it says so christ has not forgotten the promise that he gave to his own people so christ has not forgotten and then he sees everything like a drama unfolding before him and then that will encourage him saying you can endure a little more persecution a little more self-denial a little more trial because at the end of time at the end of the great tribulation we are going to reign with christ while those apostles will be judging the 12 tribes of israel then those of us who are children of god we will be judging the people of the world the apostles particularly will sit on the 12, 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of israel but the rest of us in the Gentile world will be judging the Gentile nations. And will be telling them, why didn't you believe? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verses 2 and 3. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 2 and 3. Do ye not, do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? He was talking to the Corinthians. And these Corinthians were gentle believers. As for the apostles, those are Israelites themselves. Peter was an Israelite. John, James, Matthew, all those people were Israelites. Those Israelites too were apostles. They will be judging the sinners of Israel. On it, they sit on the 12, tri 12 tribes or 12 thrones of uh, Israel judging the 12 tribes. But we, gentle believers, righteous and faithful to the Lord, will be judging the world. And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge the angels? Think about that. That we will even judge the fallen angels. We will sit on the throne and we will be saying, you angels who had great opportunity. And you knew the Lord face to face. And you saw him face to face. And you knew the power of the almighty God. And you still rebelled with the devil. Think about you as a child of God. Nobody knows anything about you now. You look like an ordinary person now. But at that time when you are sitting on the throne. And you are judging not just the gentle sinners. You are judging even the angels. What a great incentive to make you say. I'm going to be a real Christian. And I'm going to endure to the very end. I'm not going to allow anything to hinder me being faithful to the Lord to the very last moment of my life in verse 3 know ye not that we shall judge angels how much more the things that pertain to this life uh, when he talks about we reigning with Christ look at Daniel chapter 7 in Daniel chapter 7 we're reading from verse 18 
Daniel chapter 7, reading from verse 18. It says, And the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and shall possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And so it's not a something that is peculiar to the book of Revelation, giving us the instruction, the information that we children of God and the saints of God will reign with Christ. It says, the saints of the Most High, the children of God, the righteous and the kingdom citizens, they will take the kingdom and they will possess that kingdom forever and ever. In verse 22, until the, until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints, of the most high judgment was given to the saints of the most high that means the right to rule and the right to judge and the privilege of judging the sinners will be given to the saints of the most high and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom and then in verse 27 of that same chapter and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him jeremiah chapter 3 in jeremiah chapter 3 verses 17 and 18 jeremiah 3 verses 17 and 18 and at that at that time they shall call jerusalem the throne of the lord and all nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem neither shall they walk anymore after the imagination of their evil heart in those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel and they shall come together out of the land of the north of the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers that means then the people of God will possess even this earth at that time well, what does that imply now for you and for me? Well, at this time, that uh, it is like the time of probation. It is like the time of testing. And sometimes the time of testing is not a joyful time. The time of testing is the time of persecution. There are temptations now. There are trials now. There is persecution now. And the people of the world that do not know where they are going eventually, they will be persecuting you because you belong unto the Lord. But the Lord is assuring us, if you suffer with the Lord, then you will reign with him. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 11 and verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 2, from verse 11. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we suffer, suffering persecution and the trials and the opposition and the misrepresentation of the people of the world. If we suffer the mistreatment of the people of the world and we endure it to the very end, then it says, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we say because of the trials and because of the persecution, because of the great things we're going through, if we deny him, then it says, he also will deny us. But when you stay, when you place before you the privilege of reigning with Christ, you place before you the promise that you are going to reign with Christ, then you know that whatever trials or trouble or persecution or whatever it is you have at this time, it's a temporary thing. Because you are looking forward to that time when you will reign with Christ. Revelation chapter 3 verse 21. Revelation chapter 3 verse 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat, sat down with my father in his throne. It says the secret of being part of those people that will reign, that will reign with Christ. The secret of being part of those people that will sit upon the thrones, judging the people of the world at that time, is that today you keep on overcoming. There's a flesh to overcome. There is sin to overcome. And there is Satan, the strong man, the wicked one to overcome. And there is the world to overcome. And there are temptations to overcome. And there is persecution to overcome. And if you just will stand faithful and stay faithful to the Lord. Temptations come and say, I'm going to overcome. And the trials come, I'm going to overcome. 
And you will not allow even evil to overcome you. But you overcome evil with good. You say, I'm going to overcome. And then the world, they throw in their barrages of evil against you. You say, I'm going to overcome. It's those who overcome that are going to reign on that final day. Revelation chapter 5, I'm reading to you from verse from verse 9 and verse 10. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9. And the song in new song. Saying thou art worthy to take the book. And to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain. And hast redeemed us to God. By thy blood. Out of every kindred and tongue. And people and nation. And hast made us unto our God. Kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on on the earth please come back to revelation chapter 20 revelation chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 4 and i saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and i saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of jesus and for the word of god and which had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither had received the mark of, upon their forehead that is these people lived at the time of the great tribulation and yet they overcame their trials they overcame their persecution they overcame all the allurements, enticements of the devil and of the beast to worship and to receive the, the mark of the beast on their forehead. They overcame and it says they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But you know that in this part of uh, the book we're studying, we're not talk only talking about the reigning, we're talking about the resurrection. Look at that in verse 5. And the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished this is the first resurrection this is the first resurrection what kind of resurrection is this if you go back to the middle of verse 4 it says i saw the souls of them which were beheaded for the witness of jesus during the time of the great tribulation all those people that were trying to stand true to their calling they will stand true to their faith and they will stand true to the lord they'll be killed because they will not accept the mark of the beast they are beheaded but then it says they will live and they will rise up great resurrection and then they will reign with the lord as resurrection is referring to then it tells us in verse 6 blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Talking about the resurrection of the dead, the Lord Jesus Christ made it very clear when he was talking to the people, preaching to them in his earthly ministry, there's going to be a resurrection. In John chapter 5, John chapter 5, reading from verse 25, resurrection. As we talk about resurrection, uh, you know that unbelievers even are going to be are going to be raised from the dead and believers of course are going to be raised from the dead and you need to know that in the resurrection it has uh, various times and various periods let me just run you through uh, in a moment of time number one christ rose from the dead that's the first fruit and then when the rapture will take place you know it says we shall not we shall not all die which shall be changed in a moment, in a, in a moment, in a, in a twinkling of an eye. And then as you go to First Thessalonians, it says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. That means after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, at the time of the rapture, then those who have died in Christ, they will rise first. And then we which are alive will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. That's before the great tribulation. During the great tribulation, many people that are standing true to their faith, they will be killed. They'll be, they, they'll, uh, they'll be beheaded. And then at the beginning of the millennial reign, which is the end of the, of the great tribulation, those ones that have been standing faithful to the Lord, they will rise from the dead. And these are the people that we're talking about now in Revelation chapter 20. But then it says, the rest of the dead, they remain dead. They rise not until the thousand years are expired. What does it mean the rest of the days? They live not again until the thousand years were finished. It means those unrighteous people, they still remain in the grave. Because their own resurrection will come later. And when they come to that resurrection, it will be at the great white throne judgment. 
because that's what we're going to look at next week i saw the dead great and small and then we're told they stand before the lord and the books were open another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and so you find the resurrection in different different stages come back now to john chapter 5 john chapter 5 we're looking at verse 25 verily verily i say unto you the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of god and they that here shall live in verse 28 marvel not at this for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation uh, daniel has spoken about that much earlier in daniel chapter 12 verses 2 and 3 and yet daniel also specifies that there will be two kinds of resurrection the right the resurrection of the just the resurrection of the people that are serving god and the resurrection of the wicked a uh, one unto damnation the other one unto life justification and reward and commendation in daniel chapter 12 reading from verse 2 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall away, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. If you look at verse 2 very well, some, their resurrection, they are weak to everlasting life the others the wicked people will awake to shame and everlasting contempt uh, i have just told you now that you have different times and different periods when different kinds of people will experience their own resurrection that you find in first corinthians chapter 15 first corinthians chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 20 but now christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man the Lord Jesus Christ came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But every man in his own order. Every man in his own order. That means the resurrection is going to be ordered. I told you first, the people who are children of God who have died before the rapture, at the time of the rapture, they rise. And then those who will rise at the end of the great tribulation. And then those who will rise at the end of the millennium in their order. But every man in his order. Christ, the first fruits afterward, they that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, and when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. And uh, it tells us, please come back to Revelation chapter 20. In Revelation chapter 20, it tells us, blessed and holy. A seed that has part in the first resurrection. Blessed and holy. Those that have part in the first resurrection. What kind of blessing is that? In Luke chapter 20. Luke chapter 20. Verses 35 and 36. Luke chapter 20 verse 35. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain the world. That world. And the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. And that's the a blessedness that the Lord is talking about over there. That blessed and holy are those that have part in that first resurrection. And uh, what we're being told here is that those who are raised and rewarded at the beginning of the 1,000 years are the faithful saints of God. Those who have stood firm in fiery trials in this world and they maintained unshaking fidelity and faithfulness to God and faithfulness to the cause of, the, of gospel truth. Blessed and holy are those people because they have part in that false resurrection. We come to point number three now. 
As we come to point number three, we're reading from verse seven. Revelation chapter 20, reading from verse seven. And when the thousand years are expired, that is when the thousand years are finished, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. When the thousand years finish, then the devil will be loosed from his prison. Oh, you say, no doubt, it's not going to get anybody. And you also might think, wouldn't 1,000 years of punishment change the devil? No, it will not change the devil. Satan will still be Satan. You see, punishment doesn't necessarily change anybody. And even prosperity will not change the people are they, who are partaking of the millennial reign. That is the natural people. When I say natural people, please understand. When the rapture takes place, the saints of God go. And then those saints of God, they have a changed body. Supernatural body, spiritual body, a resurrected body. And they will not be able, they will not die anymore. But you understand that in the world, there will still be natural people after the saints of God had gone. And then the time of the great tribulation, many, many people will die. Millions and billions of people will die. But not everybody will die. There will still be some people on the earth. And that's the reason why uh, you, you, you have those natural people. All those natural people, some of them will get into the kingdom. And those are the people who are going to reign over. And then they'll partake of the 1,000 years of reigning of Christ. There'll be plenty of food. They'll, the economy will be wonderful. The government will be wonderful because Christ will be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And yet, after 1,000 years, and Satan will be released again. Satan will go to the uh, four corners of the earth, the north and the south and the east and the west, to deceive the people. And you think he'll not get people to deceive? Because after all, they've gone through that period of plenty. And that period of prosperity, and that period of peace, and that period of uninterrupted protection and preservation and pleasure, and that period when the saints of God were helping the people, counseling the people, helping the people, you say, No, it's not going to find anybody to deceive. Yes, you'll find people to deceive. Look at it from verse 8 and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. That is when Satan is released again. After the people have enjoyed the peace of the millennial reign of the Prince of Peace, Satan will still be able to deceive them. You know, sometimes you are surprised you are bringing somebody to church. And a fellow has not been born again. The fellow has not given our life to the Lord. But you provide everything. You are paying school fees. You are giving food. All the things you are buying for your children, you are buying for him or you are buying for her. And you take care of her. And uh, you know, for five years, seven years, just uh, coming with you and you say, well, I'm not, I'm not going to bother her with salvation. She understands. All that she's enjoying for me here is because I'm in Christ. It's because I'm a child of God. After all, I'm not the parents and I'm doing all this for him. I'm doing all this for her. I'm sure this provision, prosperity, plenty, privilege is going to change this boy. It's going to change this girl. And eventually the parents come over, they come to take her after about 10 years of staying with you. And then you see her a week after that and she has turned to another scene. You say, what? With all the care I gave, what are you talking about? Only 10 years of taking care of her, taking care of him, and was not born again, and turned to be a devil even after 10 years. 1,000 years of prosperity and peace. 1,000 years of Jesus ruling the people, directing the people. And yet there will be a revolt after the 1,000 years. The devil will still be able to deceive them. Satan will remain Satan after the 1,000 years of punishment. And sinners will remain sinners after 1,000 years of enjoyment. And you know, sometimes uh, uh, pastors and preachers and leaders in churches, sometimes when you don't read the Bible, you have wrong expectation. You know, you just say, if we give all the money in the church for charity, you know, the church is going to be a great church. And the people are just going to be cooperative and submissive and obedient because, you know, we were spending the money of the church on charity. And, you know, this one has a need, we give them. And this one has need, we give them. Everybody is enjoying. You know, we clothe them, we feed them, we do everything. 
But if they are not born again, if they are not born again, sinners are sinners. You can give all the money in the church to those people. There's nothing they're going to do. You can give all the privileges, all the prosperity, and you can give, you can take all your time and counsel them and pray for them and they get the healing and get everything. If they are not born again, they are not born again. And with after you've done all that, you are surprised. They'll bite your finger. They might even chop off your hand, not only your finger. Because if somebody is not born again, there is nothing that will replace salvation. Being born again, new life in Christ. That's why you find that there are many people, even after you've taken care of them, after you've, you know, you've done everything you think you can do, they're still the people they are. And that's what will happen at the time, at the end of the millennial reign of Christ. And can I send a note of warning to you? You are coming to this church. You are going to the house fellowship and you are going to the district and everybody is taking care of you and those people are having wrong expectations they say okay with all the care we're given in the house fellowship and with all the we're paying the school fees of their children in school we're doing everything we can do obviously they will never leave this church they will remain in this church and be faithful ah you're deceiving yourself with everything you have done a false prophet will come along and say what are you doing there in the deeper life Oh, they are giving me food, they are giving me clothes and they are doing everything and they are still going to de deceive them if they are not born again and you will be surprised those are the same people you are helping they will be fighting against you and fighting against the church it's going to happen to Satan it's going to happen to the people at the time of the millennial reign and it's happening today already look at that again in the word of God in Revelation chapter 20 verse 7 and when the thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, and to gather them to, together to battle, and the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breast of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever again i'm telling you don't let that surprise you in fact isaiah chapter 26 tells us isaiah chapter 26 reading there in verse 10 isaiah chapter 26 verse 10 let favor be showed to the wicked, yet he will not learn righteousness. Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet he will not learn righteousness. You know, it takes the blood of Jesus to convert a man or a woman. It takes repentance to change a man or to change a woman. It takes the hand of the Lord and it takes that pierced hand were from where the blood was dripping to come in the heart of man and then cleanse the sin away take the sin away take the evil away it takes that conversion without that conversion there's not going to be any change let favor be shown to a wicked man let favor be shown to a sinner let favor be shown to a devilish person and yet that's not going to change the individual it's going to take repentance and that's the reason why you've been coming to church for a long time you say well i'm coming i'm coming uh, when you know as they say in our old uh, language adage that uh, when the leaf is so much in the soap it will become part of the soap it never happens like that there's going to be a definite time of repentance there's going to be a te definite time of turning away from evil there's going to be a definite time of calling upon the name of the lord and then you are saved and then you are changed and you are turned around and there is a definite change a definite conversion that takes place if any man be in christ you must come into christ it is only then you are going to become a new creature all things will pass away and behold all things will become new have you been coming to this church for so many years and you have not taken a definite step of being born again have you been coming for so many years and you have never turned away from your sin have you been coming so many years you are changing your dressing you are changing whatever you drink or whatever you eat or whatever you smoke you are not smoking that anymore but you have not been born again you'll be among the people that are fighting against christ and fighting against the people of god and fighting against the word of god because you are not born again there must be a definite step 
turning to the Lord and giving yourself to the Lord. Except that happens, all the favor you receive, all the miracles you receive, all the goodness of the people of God that you receive is not going to change you. Look at that again, Isaiah chapter 26 verse 10. Let favor be showed to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness, he will deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. And then let's look at, uh, you know, this character of Satan in Isaiah chapter 24. Isaiah chapter 24. I'm reading to you from verse 22. Isaiah 24 verse 22. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and they shall be shut up in the prison after many days shall be visited that means will be loosed again will be released again that's what we read just there and look at what the devil will do when he comes out he'll go to the four corners and the four quarters of the earth and will deceive the people again and that means it's old trade his old action and his old lifestyle is what you still keep on doing and that's uh, how sinners are you know sometimes a child is living with you you are bringing the child to church and uh, you know she's been bad or he's been bad before he came to you and then they go on holidays to spend holidays with their parents and in the holidays the second day after the holidays not born again will continue the old trade and the old character and the old behavior and before the fellow comes back all that you have taught all the years you have worked individual everything is totally lost that's just like the devil in, uh, in john chapter 8 verse 44 john chapter 8 verse 44 ye of your father the devil and the loss of your father ye will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him and when it speaketh a lie it speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of each uh, that's the character of the devil and, and that's what what he does now to deceive the whole earth to go after him and that's what he'll still be doing at that time when he has been released from the bottomless pit in second corinthians chapter 11 second corinthians chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 13 second corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 here it tells us about the character of the devil it tells us about uh, the behavior of the devil what you still do even after that time is released from the bottomless pit it tells us for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of christ and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light when he comes to those people after that millennial reign what will he be telling them he'll be talking like an angel of light i can give you greater peace i can give you greater protection i can give you greater prosperity i can give you greater reign or are you thinking that christ has given you everything and it will succeed in deceiving the people verse 15 therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works and then we're told in revelation chapter 12 verse 9 revelation chapter 12 verse 9 and you learn that after he has been released from the bottomless pit he'll go to the four corners and the four quarters of the earth and deceive the people that's always what he has done that's what he'll always keep doing revelation chapter 12 verse 9 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him i want you to notice that part of the sentence there which deceives the whole world deceiving the whole world in revelation chapter 13 verses 13 and 14 revelation 13 verse 13 it says and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceives them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do he deceives them. The deception, that's his trade. That's his job. That's his work. That's what, he al that's what he always has been doing. And that's what he continues to do. Revelation chapter 16 verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. And out of the mouth of the beast. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils walking miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God. 
And so you understand that when he comes and he does that, he does that so that he'll fight against the Almighty God. What if somebody is fighting against God? What's the prediction? What's the perdition? What's the punishment? What's going to be the lot of that individual? Isaiah chapter 45 verse 9. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 9. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Woe unto him that striveth, that fighteth with his maker. And that's what will happen to them. There will be war. There will be indignation. There will be judgment. There will be perdition. There will be punishment that will come upon them because they fight against the king of kings and against the lord of lords. We're told that those people are going to gather together in Gog and Magog. In Ezekiel chapter 38, Ezekiel chapter 38, I'm reading to you from verse 9. Ezekiel 38, reading from verse 9. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm and thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land thou and all thy bands and many people will be thus says the lord it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought and thou shalt say i will go up to the land of the unwalled unwall villages i will go to them that are at, at rest that dwell safely all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates to take a spoil and to take a prey to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee are thou come to take a spoil as thou gathered thy company to take a prey to, get, to carry away silver and gold to take away cattle and goods and to take a great spoil therefore son of man prophesy and say unto God thus says the Lord in that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, shall thou not know it? And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company, and a mighty and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be be in the latter days and I will bring thee against my land and the, that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee O God before their eyes thus says the Lord God and now he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants the prophets of Israel which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them and it shall come to pass at that same time that God shall come against the land of Israel and says the Lord God that my fury shall come up in my face for in my jealousy and in my in, in the fire of my wrath have I spoken surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the of heaven and the beasts of the field and all the creeping things that creepeth upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountain shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground and I will call for the sword against him throughout all my mountains says the Lord God Every man's sword shall be against his brother, and I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain, the great hailstone and fire and brimstone, that I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. That's describing the same thing. When the Lord will come upon those people, he'll destroy them in ezekiel chapter 39 verse 5 ezekiel chapter 39 verse 5 thou shalt fall upon the open field for i have spoken it says the lord god and i will send a fire on magog on magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles and they shall know that i am the lord so 
will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord the Holy One of Israel behold it is come and it is done says the Lord God this is the day whereof I have spoken and so judgment will come as we look at Revelation chapter 20 Revelation chapter 20 and we're looking at verse 10 and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and you know all the people that refuse to repent all the people that will not give their lives to the lord jesus christ that same lord that same punishment will come upon them they will spend eternity in hellfire with satan and his fallen angels in Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Verse 46, and thee shall go away into everlasting punishment. The question I have for you before we pray is where will you spend eternity? Are you on the side of Satan? Is he deceiving you? Are you accepting his deception? And are you planning to spend eternity with the devil in hellfire? Or you have the chance of repenting today and looking into the future saying, no, I'm not going to be with the devil. I will not be with the devil today. Neither will I be with the devil in eternity. You can come to the Lord today. Just repent of your sin. And then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord will forgive you. Change your life. Write your name in the book of life. If you were born again before, but then you went back into sin, you became a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter. And now you are living in sin. There's condemnation in your heart. And you don't have any assurance that if you die today, you'll go to heaven you can repent you you can come to the lord to you if my people which are called by my name they'll humble themselves and they will seek my face and turn from their wicked ways i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sin and i will heal their land the choice is just today let the wicked turn away from their wickedness let the unrighteous man turn away from his unrighteousness let him call upon the name of the lord because the lord will abundantly pardon today is a day of grace and a day of salvation and the lord is come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest the grace of god is still available today and whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved let's rise up let's talk to the lord uh, be a wise person and be a normal person be a reasonable person judgment is coming and if you remain in sin you are going to be judged with satan and with his angels but you can call upon the lord today you can say lord i give myself to you i surrender myself to you no more fighting with god no more striving with god no more uh, going against god no more opposing god no more opposing the word of god i will not be a hindrance to myself getting to heaven i will not join the devil i will not do the work of the devil for him i'm going to be with the lord i'm going to join the lord and i'm going to give my hand in surrender to the lord oh lord take me take my life receive me oh lord i turn away from my sin be a reasonable man be a reasonable woman and be a reasonable person don't joke with eternity don't joke with your life eternal life because if you reject today how do you know where you're going to spend eternity the lord is calling you today you call upon the lord and say lord here i am lord here i am judas Iscariot had all the messages of the lord jesus christ but he was adamant in sin he was rebellious and he remained in sin and then he perished right now he's in hell fire and he's going to spend eternity with the devil and his angels in the lake of fire are you going to end up like judas Iscariot? you have heard over and over you can repent today you can call upon the lord today he that covereth his sin shall not prosper but he that confesses and forsake them shall have the mercy of God. This is the day of mercy and this is the day of grace. This is the day of the love of God. For God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You can call upon the Lord today. You can say Lord I need mercy. Lord I need your grace. Lord I need your strength. I'm not going to continue in the deception of the devil. Oh Lord turn me around. Change me. Transform me. Give me your grace and give me your mercy. Salvation is available today 
behold, today is a day of salvation. Today is a day when you can have the life, eternal life from the Lord. Why will you perish? Why will you allow the devil to continue deceiving you? Why will you allow the devil to seal your mind and seal your heart and seal your dream and then seal you up for everlasting destruction, everlasting doom? Why don't you call upon the Lord today and say, Lord, here I am. I surrender myself to you. I give myself to you. Lord, forgive my sin. Lord, take my sin away. Heal my backsliding. I will not go astray anymore. I bring wars before the Lord. Oh Lord, I will no more follow. I will no more follow the devil. I will no more follow wickedness. I will no more follow the way of sin. I give myself to you. I surrender myself to you. Take me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Turn me around, Lord. Make my life totally new. Make my life totally different. The Lord is waiting on you. The Lord is waiting for you. You can come to the Lord today and the Lord can change your life. Remember, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. For no peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Are you holy enough for the rapture? Are you righteous enough for the rapture? Are you pure enough for the rapture? Behold, what manner of men we are that we should be called the children of God, the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when it shall appear, we shall be like him because we shall see him, even as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as Christ is pure. Even as Christ is pure. As you are as pure like that in your heart. Are you as pure like that in your mind? Are you as pure like that in your soul? Are you as pure like that in your desires as you are, are you as pure like that in your interaction with men and women are you as pure is your hand clean is your hand clean who are the people that will go to the hill of the lord who are the people that will be and dwell in a holy mountain they are the people that have clean hands and a pure heart the people that have not lifted their hearts unto vanity you are not lifting your soul unto vanity you are not gossiping and you are not fighting and you are not doing evil you are righteous you have been washed with the blood of the lamb and you remain righteous on until that glorious day until when you will come the lord is coming the lord is coming where will you be on that day you're one of those people that have received the mercy of God. You have received the miracles of God. You have received the prosperity. And since you came, the Lord has given you a good marriage, has given you children, has given you a lot of things. And yet, even upon all that that the Lord has done for you, are you still rebelling against God? Are you like Satan? Are you like those people at the time of the millennium that even when Satan will come again and deceive them, they will still be yielding to the deception of the devil with all that you are hearing, with all that you are studying, with all all that you are receiving and with all the mercy that has been shown unto you have you surrendered to the lord have you yielded to the lord is your heart melted in the sight of the lord are you giving yourself to the lord saying oh lord i know you have helped me i know you have blessed me i know you have prospered me i know you have given me peace i know you have healed me i know you have delivered me i know you've done everything for me that i could ever desire because of that i'm giving myself to you i will not follow the devil anymore i will not follow the ways of evil anymore I will not follow the depraved nature anymore. Receive me, Lord. Take me, Lord. I belong to you. I give myself to you completely. You surrender yourself to the Lord today and say, Lord, here am I. You can change me. You can transform me. You can cleanse me and wash me with the blood of the Lamb. Let the Lord do it right now. Let the Lord do it right now. And then make a final full commitment with the Lord that you will not go back from the Lord anymore. You'll not backslide anymore. You'll not go back to your vomit anymore. You said yes to the Lord. You'll not say no anymore. You've said no to the the devil you not say yes to the devil anymore you give your heart you give your life everything you have to the lord and you allow the blood of the lamb to cleanse you to wash you to purge you to purify you and to make you holy and righteous in the sight of the lord so that when the lord shall come at the time of the rapture and the dead in christ shall rise up and then we which are alive will be caught up together with him in the sky that you will be there on that day that your coming to bible study will not be in vain that your studying the Bible will not be in vain. That your associating with the people of God will not be in vain. That your hearing about salvation, hearing about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior and the Lord and the Master, the Redeemer, that your hearing all these things you are hearing will not be in vain. Why don't you call upon the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. I will no more strive against the Lord. I will no more resist the Lord. I will no more oppose the way of the Lord. I surrender. I surrender. I give myself. I give myself completely. Here am I, Lord. Take me. 
Here am I, Lord, take me. Here am I, Lord, take me. All my heart, all my will, all my soul, all my mind, I'm going to serve the Lord. I will, not, I will not go back again. I'll be faithful to the Lord. I'll show fidelity and faithfulness, sincerity and steadfastness in continuing to follow the Lord. You tell the Lord because the Lord wants to do something definite in your heart that he, he wants to break the, the link you have with the devil. He wants to erase the, uh, the deception of the devil away from your life that you will be who he wants you to be. You will do what he wants you to do. You straighten out your life. You do what he wants you to do so that on that wonderful day when the saints of God shall sit on thrones, you'll be among them. There may be little persecution now. There may be little challenges now. There may be little temptations now. The world may be against you now, but you're fighting against the world, resisting the devil and resisting all the overtures the devil is making towards you. And you're saying, no, no, I'm going to stand faithful and stand firm to the very end. The Lord is calling upon you and saying, he wants you to reign with Christ. He wants you to be a real child of God. He wants to give you the opportunity to be like a saint, a righteous man, a believing child of God. So that on that day you will reign with the Lord. Why don't you just say, Lord, I surrender. I give myself to you. I'm not going to perish with the world. I'm not going to perish with the people of the world. I'm not going to perish and I'm not going to go to hell, the lake of fire with Satan. I give myself to you. I give myself to you. Grant me your grace, Lord. When temptations come to stand, stand true and stand faithful and stand and stand steadfast in the Lord. And the Lord is able to help you. And it's not just those who have believed that that's not what counts. It's not the beginning. It's if you continue to the very end. When Jesus spoke to those who believed on him, he said, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Continue, continue, continue in the word of God. Continue in the love of God. Continue in the grace of God. Continue in the faith and continue in steadfastness unto the Lord. If you continue, if you continue, if you continue, then are you my disciples indeed. You promise the Lord, Lord, with your grace, with your strength abiding within me, with your spirit helping me, I will continue, continue faithful to the very end. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved.